free webinar in environmental management. To start with, let us open our minds and hearts for our invitation to be led to us by our budget and finance chairperson, Sister Marlene A. Satur, ARLPTMM, for our invocation, and to be followed by singing of Philippine National Anthem. Good morning. We place ourselves humbly before the presence of God and mark ourselves with the sign of God's ultimate love for us, the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Glorious and blessed God, we glorify and thank your name for your steadfast love and guidance. We place our work and ourselves into your hands. Anoint our creativity, our ideas, our energy, so that even the smallest task may bring you honor. We beg you to bless our webinar on environmental management. Extend your wisdom, enlightenment, and inspiration to our guest speakers. To Congressman Jose Manuel Alba, to Mr. Red Arthur Diana, and to Engineer Ed Roderick V. Canuto, so that they may be able to share and impart effectively the most of their knowledge and talents, their field of expertise, and their respective topics. Bless to the participants in this virtual room so that they may be able to glean the vital information from this wholesome activity. May you bestow your blessings to us all, so we will be able to grasp, understand, and implement what, you will, what we will learn in the spirit of love and generosity. Guide all the committees behind this event that we may be able to fulfill our humble tasks effectively and efficiently so that the set goals and objectives of this webinar be achieved, for indeed your ultimate blessings would mean success. Dear Lord, 
When challenges arise, guide us. When we are weary, energize us. May the work that we do and the way that we do it bring hope, life, and courage to all with whom we work and serve. Rooted in the love, may your face illumine this activity done in your name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Mabuhay and good morning ladies and gentlemen. In behalf of Dr. L Management Class, we welcome you dear participants in today's webinar. So sit back, relax, and let us be informed and equip a lot of things coming from our high caliber speakers in environmental management. But, but above anything else, we would like to acknowledge the presence of the following. Ma'am Orlando Ungon, Dr. Ian Labing Labinghisa, and Sir Alden Cavial of West Visayas State University, Hanningway Campus. Also, Dr. Hasid Sheva. And at this moment, let us welcome our ever vibrant and most trusted webinar chairperson, Jet L. Disikatan, for his welcome remarks. Thank you so much, Dr. Joanna. Hope I'm audible. Good morning, everybody. In pursuit of giving students holistic education, Guimara State University has made its way to be at par with the local colleges and universities, offering quality education at a minimal cost. It has been dynamic for implementing its academic projects and be able to propel students towards academic excellence, even beyond the pandemic. Environmental management puts in place strategies to conserve energy, water, and resources, and to reduce negative impacts on the environment by industrial activities. In addition to the fact that environmental management is an interdisciplinary field that interacts with business, science, and law. This field involves understanding how business strategies must change in the face of environmental constraints and people, principles of sustainable development and the growth and endorsement by the public of green services and products. Thereby, our section have decided that we will be conducting a free webinar environmental management. This will create awareness about how organizations evolve through environmental management to meet their strategic goals in the private and public sectors and as well the academy. And as the webinar chairperson, I am honored and dignified to warmly open this momentous event. We hope that each participant will learn exciting new things and environmental management. 
and may this day be a fruitful and productive one. Thank you so much, dear participants. Sit back, relax, and make this day a meaningful one. Thank you. Back to you, Dr. Joanna. Thank you, Sir Zat, for a warm welcome to our dear participants. Well, at this moment, may I call on our invitation and chairperson, a poster and e poster chairperson for Miss Rosalyn G. of One MBA for her statement of purpose. Thank you, Miss Joanna. Am I audible? Yes, Doc. Good morning, yes, everyone. Okay, good morning again, everyone. The Guimara State University Graduate School Program as a Center of Advanced Education is committed to develop the potential of all educators, leaders, and managers through the acquisition of scientific knowledge and skills. Given the uncertainty of the situation due to the pandemic brought about by COVID-19, we need to respond positively. Learning and school operations has to continue. Schools and universities need to deliver what is expected from them and accept the challenges and turn those into opportunities. Environmental management is entirely an emerging and dynamic concept. It is concerned with the management or environment encompassing a business. It represents the organizational structure, responsibilities, sequences, processes, and preconditions for the implementation of an environmental corporate policy. Environment brings together all inanimate organisms and forces functioning in nature, including man. The present state of economic development including the environmental state, makes it necessary to broaden management's understanding of natural environment. The way to industrialization being emphasized for the development of economy in the coming years, environmental pollution will be the ecological nightmare. Hence, it has become imperative to take into account the ecological consequences while setting up an industrial unit. Technology is available today to reduce the environmental pollution, and it must be used to correct the excesses of ecological brutality and to minimize the degree of environmental degradation. In line with this, this webinar is proposed to acquaint students and uh, everyone enrolled in the current semester of EY 2021-2022 in the subject PMBA 402 or environmental management with practicum despite of the challenges brought by the pandemic in order to be updated with the current trends in environmental management which is applicable also in business operations. Likewise, this event will help the organizer, organizers apply their learnings in the subject as experiential learning and become an active experience in working together as a team. Again, good morning, everyone, and thank you. Back to you, Ms. Luana. Thank you, Jackie Wilson, for the very purposeful statement. Well, I think and I believe that this event will not be possible for all of you. At this juncture, may I call on our documentation and compilation chairperson, Sir Michael M. Villarino, MBA HM, for, for presentation of participants. Thank you so much, Dr. Johanna. <clears throat> so, good morning, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, Doc. Okay, thank you. So let me acknowledge our participants from the different state colleges, universities, and organizations for today's webinar. It is with great pleasure to be with you today. So as I call the name of your institution, may I request that you virtually raise hands using the icon on your Zoom screens. So let me start with the Altavas College. Also we have with us is the Capi State University 
from Pontevedra campus and the West Visaya State University Haniwai campus, the faculty and students. Also we have here also from Taguig City University. Thank you. And National Teachers College. Also, we have also the Colegio de Santa Rita de San Carlos Incorporation. Also, we have here the BSU or the Binget State University. And the faculty of Honeyway Campus. The ESAT or Iloilo Science and Technology from Dumangas Campus. And of course, we have our own Gimara State University. And also we have here St. Raphael Academy, Academy from Ligaspi Bicol. Okay, that will be all. On behalf of the webinar working committee, thank you for being with us today. Enjoy everyone. Thank you, Sir, Ma Sir Michael, for warmly welcoming our their participants. We are very happy to see all of you virtually. Well, at this moment, may I call out our promotion and publicity chairperson, Romel B. Abaldonado, MBA, HRM, for introduction our of our guest speaker. Good morning, everyone. Our first speaker is a graduate of AB Philosophy at Seminario Mayor Ricolitos, 1992-1995 in Baguio City. He graduated his AB Philosophy and Human Resources Development 1999 at San Beda College, Mindiola, Manila. He graduated his Bachelor of Law year 2002-2005 in Pasay City. Presently, he graduated his Executive Master in Disaster, Risk and Crisis Management, December 2021 in Makati City. His work experience are the following. He is a senior associate labor relations and employer relations in San Miguel Brewery Incorporated 2007 to 2012 and San Miguel Corporation Beer Division 1999 to 2007 in Mandaluyong City. He is a chairman, executive director, member of the board in Bukidnon Integrated Network of Home Industries Incorporated, 2007 to 2010, at Manolo Fortich Bukinon. He is the chairman, the president, corporate secretary of Rural Bank of Manolo Fortich Incorporated, 2010 to 2019, in Manolo Fortich Bukinon. He is a chairman and president of Freedom and Equity Finance Incorporated 2019 up to June 30, 2022 in Manolo Fortich, Bukinon. He has different advocacy, which is the final resilience through education, enterprise development, organizing, and mentoring. Second, Advocacy is a Bamboo Economic Enterprise Program. He is connected in 19th Congress House of Representatives year 2022 to 2025. He is the Vice Chairperson Committee on Bank and Financial Intermediaries. He is a Vice Chairperson Committee on Sustainable Development Goals and a member committee, or I mean, a committee on foreign affairs, a member committee on micro, small, and medium enterprise development, 
and a member committee on rural development. Let us all welcome Congressman Jose Manuel F. Alba. Sir, good morning. Sir, Congressman, I think you are on mute. You are not audible. Okay, I think there is a problem with Congressman's microphone. Um, kindly click the Congressman on. If you're using your phone, but you can click join via Wi-Fi or cellular data. are still inaudible po, Congressman. Maladaan nga daan kami sang... Congressman, I think you um still not eligible for. Reminder to our dear participants to always put your microphones on mute. Dear participants, once more a reminder to please turn off your microphones. Well, at this moment, while we are still waiting for the technical error or some technical errors, may I just acknowledge the following faculty from different institutions. First is Sister Marisa Dacuya, AR Principal from St. Raphael Academy in Legazpi Bicol. Of course, we would like to acknowledge the presence of Mom Ornina Ongon, Dr. Ian Labinhisa, and Sir Alvin Camiel of West Visayas State University, Haniwai Campus. Hi, sir. Um, Hi, thank you. It's good morning. Um, we are very happy to see you virtually. Also, we would like to acknowledge the following admins who are present virtually. Coming. Okay, Joanna, I think you're muted. Oh. Okay, Joanna.
Yang siapa? Yang baca. Harus kenal sih, Mas. Mas. Can you share screen, Pau? Anyway, uh, okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for this uh, opportunity to share. Uh, actually, we have a very, a very good topic uh, this morning, and it's all about uh, effective financial education for environmental stewardship and sustainability. Do we now have the presentation? First of all, I'd like to thank uh, the organizers and of course my dear friend, uh, Sister Marley uh, for uh, linking up for this uh, webinar. Uh, as uh, the person who introduced me a while ago mentioned, no, we, are, we are championing financial education, especially in the rural areas, uh, sp specifically in the first trick of the field. Again, you would like to remind the participants to kindly mute your microphone so that to avoid any disturbances during the presentation of our guest speaker. Thank you. Okay, uh, there are there are three things though, that we that there are three important items that uh, uh, we can extract from the title. No, first is financial education. The second one is on environmental stewardship. And the third item is sustainability. Now, my uh, presentation uh, originally is uh, divided into two parts. The first one is on the theoretical aspect. And uh, the second one is on the uh, practical side. Or our actual experience in the first district of uh, Bukidnon. Now for few definitions, no. uh, just to, just a short review, I'm sure everyone is already aware of this. Financial education is the, uh, it's the process no, of learning the skills and the knowledge on financial matters in order for us to be able to take effective action that uh, best fulfills our uh, personal goals, no, family goals, and of course, including our community goals. Now, that's the first definition, the definition of financial education. In a nutshell, financial education is all about how to handle our financial resources properly. Okay? The second item is environmental stewardship. I'm sure everybody is aware already of the definition, no? but uh, uh, just a reminder, no? It's the responsible use and protection of the natural environment through conservation and sustainable practices in order for uh, us to continue to enhance our ecosystem, uh, to make it more resilient, and of course, in order to uh, protect also the uh, interests of uh, the community and the well-being of the people in that particular uh, community. And the last item is on sustainability. Sustainability, as we all know, is defined as the practice of using our natural resources responsibly without uh, depriving the next generation from uh, enjoying the same. No? So uh, sustainable development is all about protecting or utilizing uh, our current resources 
without uh, uh, without depriving the next generation from enjoying the same. Okay, so th those are the three things that uh, uh, very that things that are very important that now as far as the per this particular talk is concerned. No, so how do we achieve environmental stewardship and sustainability? Actually, I have a very very simple. Uh, theory, no, uh, as far as this particular topic is concerned, no. First, we need to consistently introduce and campaign, no. Number one, environmental protection. Number two, sustainable livelihood, no. I'm sure we've been doing this for the longest time. But the third item that I would like to introduce or integrate, no is the idea of championing financial education. No? Kasi alam natin na kung uh, environment protection, environmental protection, and livelihood, sustainable livelihood, without financial literacy, no livelihood will survive. No? Kung yung mga malalaking ang kumpanya, eh, bumabagsak pa, kahit meron na silang magagaling na mga financial managers and uh, accountants, no? how much more... Uh, an ordinary person who does not have uh, any background or any training on personal finance. So, sayang yung mga livelihood uh, programs, livelihood opportunities, no? Kung uh, hindi natin na uh, tutulungan or tuturuan ang ating mga kababayan on how to uh, wisely manage their financial resources, no? So, those three things. I think it, uh, these things are the core ingredients in order to ensure, in order more or less to ascertain that our uh, effort towards environmental sustain, environmental stewardship and uh, our aspiration for sustainable development no, can really be achieved. No? So uh, I will repeat again, the three things, no? environmental protection. And of course, we need to provide sustainable, sustainable livelihood to the different communities. And lastly, financial education and training to our people no? because at the end of the day before we we can achieve no uh, sustainability and uh, environmental stewardship we really need to ensure that our people are secured or they are able to achieve no no uh, economic well-being no we sayang ang mga magaganda nating programa kung ang hindi natin masiguro na ang ating mga kababayan ay mabigyan ng uh, uh, sapat na kakayahan, ng oportunidad na maprotektahan ang kanilang uh, uh, economic well-being. No? Yan ay uh, mahirap kasing magtulak ng mga programa kung ang tao ay gutom, kung ang tao ay naghihirap o ang tao ay baon sa, sa utang, no? baon sa kahirapan. No? So I really believe that as we champion environmental protection, we also need to uh, uh, ensure that our uh, kababayans are given enough training uh, on financial, uh, personal, especially personal finance, no? financial management, no? management of their personal finances. No? So, okay, that's the theoretical standpoint. No? I'm sure everybody is uh, interested to know what we are doing in the first district of Bukidnon. Okay. In 2018, we launched the Freedom for All project. The uh, Freedom for, for All project, uh, Freedom is actually an acronym. No? It stands for uh, Financial Resilience, so Education, Enterprise Development, Organizing, and Mentoring. No? Uh, because I believe, as I have said a while ago, since my background is banking and finance, no? for the last 10 years, I've seen so many people, uh, friends, no? uh, um, succeed in life, no? succeed in their careers, but after retiring, no? uh, nauubos yung pera, nawawala yung napag-ipunan, kasi uh, hindi napaghandaan ang, uh, ang uh, kung paano gamitin nang uh, maayos ang kanilang uh, mga financial resources no so 
uh, after three years, makikita natin babalik, humihingi ng financial assistance. No? Uh, my dear friends, alam naman natin lahat no, na um, isa sa malaking problema natin is ang ating mga lifestyles. No? So even though malaki ang sweldo, pero pagdating ng uh, uh, mga may uh, nakarating sa mall, may nakitang bagong damit, no? kahit na uh, Uh, meron pa namang mga kagamitan sa bahay but uh, because of pressure sa advertising and uh, and social media no so napapagastos ng wala sa panahon no so marami tayong mga kababayan ang uh, na naiipit or naiiging alipin sa ganitong sistema no malaking sweldo pero pagdating ng uh, panahon ng pagsweldo nauubos agad no so we really need to Uh, provide coaching and counseling no and mentoring sessions no uh, that's why i encourage companies no to provide continuing financial education to their employees no because we want our employees to have sufficient financial resources so that by the time they retire money will not be a problem okay so this is our program in bukidnon we call it freedom for all this was actually inspired by Uh, Nelson Mandela no because uh, um, Nelson Mandela once said that overcoming poverty is never a gesture of charity it is an act of justice it is the protection of a fundamental uh, human right the right to dignity and a decent life no kung baon ka sa utang no mahihirapan ang pamilya no nag-aaway ang mag-asawa na iipit ang mga anak hindi makapag-aral because walang pangtusto sa kanilang uh, edukasyon no so Nelson Mandela even said that while poverty persists there is no true freedom that's why we started this campaign uh, on uh, financial resilience because we really believe that uh, financial uh, uh, personal finance should be a core competence of every filipino okay so uh In in Bukidnon, we conduct uh, financial literacy sessions. No, uh, we do it in schools, in barangay halls, in municipal uh, centers. We provide uh, financial education to financial literacy sessions to uh, uh, companies, chambers of commerce. No, to everybody who is interested. No, we're they, we are trying to create uh, more champions. No. Uh, in in the different communities we where we uh, are present so financial literacy session we also uh, influenced or encouraged no local government units to pass uh, uh, meaningful local legislations no ordinances no uh, championing financial resilience no so in, in bukidnon the first district we were able to convince you no know, several uh, uh, lgus to pass uh, financial aid ordinances you no know, uh, specifically in the municipalities of talakag libona sumilaw and uh, malitbo you know? uh, the uh, the uh, main objective of the ordinance is to organize the, the financial sector operating in in these communities no? ito yung mga banko lending and other uh, finance corporations no na primarily they provide access to credit no uh, microfinance institutions no so we are uh, we are in the process of organizing them uh, so that uh, these institutions no will not limit their operation to purely or will not limit their uh, exposure to purely lending activities i really believe that the financial institutions no have the moral obligation to educate their clients and not to limit themselves to uh, purely lending activities no so malaking malaking responsibilidad ang nasa balikat ng ating mga institusyon Congressman, Congressman, so sorry to interrupt. Uh, 
mamute po kayo for a while lang po ako, Ms. Manu. Uh, microphone button po. Thank you. Hello? Okay. Okay na po. Audible na po. Thank you. Okay. Sorry again, no? For this technical glitch. Okay, now we have the Can we proceed? Yes, Congressman. Okay. So we are now on, do you now have the slides? Okay. So the, um, the objective of the ordinance as I have said, is to organize uh, financial institutions so that they rise up to the challenge. No? Because unfortunately, uh, uh, unfortunately, in our uh, uh, country, uh, hindi natin uh, na-integrate or sabihin natin, hindi natutukan ng gusto no? ang, ang konsepto ng personal finance sa ating uh, education curriculum. So, we want... Uh, uh, we want LGUs, no, local government units, no, to uh, partner with the financial sector, no, in, in providing financial education to their uh, constituents. The second item is the second objective of the ordinance is to create financial and economic programs no, for the community that will improve the financial and economic well-being of of their constituents. So this particular ordinance, this particular program, we were able to uh, influence these LGUs uh, because we did it in partnership with the uh, Asian Institute of Management no? as part of our uh, uh, partnership no? and the uh, office of uh, then former Congresswoman Maria Lourdes Acosta Alba. So we were able to uh, convince several LGUs no, to pass uh, this particular ordinance. Okay. And in Congress, uh, my dear friends, no, uh, just uh, a few weeks ago, we authored House Bill 3135, also known as the uh, Financial Literacy Act of 2022. It is an act declaring a national policy, the integration of financial literacy in our education system as a tool for poverty reduction and national development. So that this particular bill, hopefully, kung uh, ito po ay maging batas, no? itong uh, bill na po ito ay magmamandate sa ating uh, Department of Education to integrate no, uh, financial uh, literacy in all levels of our education no, from uh, elementary to secondary to tertiary. Okay. Hello? Congressman? Hello, yes, 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 Kong. It's already audible and your presentation is, al is already visible. Okay, so can we proceed to page uh, number 28? <laughs> Okay. 
Okay. So the last item that I would like to share to everyone is our Bamboo Economic Enterprise Program in the first district of Bukidnon. Next slide, please. So the objective of the program is to introduce bamboo as an alternative material to all wood-based products. No? And of course, to provide sustain sustainable livelihood to the different rural communities in our district. No? Next slide, please. We established a bamboo innovation hub in Manolo Fortich in order to showcase the potential of uh, uh, Bukidnon's giant bamboo, also known as uh, Dendrocalamus asper. No? So we uh, constructed no, uh, this particular uh, pavilion made totally of uh, uh, giant bamboo in order to uh, convince the population or to convince everybody that uh, uh, bamboo is a very uh, strong material. Uh, it can be a very, very good alternative no, to all wood-based uh, uh, products or wood, all wood-based uh, uh, construction material. Next slide. So in, the, in, this, uh, in the slide, you can see that uh, uh, we were able to construct no, a uh, pavilion no, made totally of bamboo. No, so uh, this is actually our way of influencing everybody that uh, there is really a future no, in, a, in, in uh, bamboo. Now, may, maybe uh, many of you are asking, bakit bamboo, but kailangan natin i-promote uh, ang bamboo? No? Uh, I really believe that uh, it is now the time no, for, uh, for all of us no, uh, to shift no, from being a uh, wood-centered uh, community to towards uh, bamboo. No? Kasi alam naman po natin na ubus na ngayon ang mga kahoy sa ating mga bukid. No? And we cannot stop people from uh, cutting trees no? for as long as there is demand. Alam naman po natin sa ekonomiya na for as long as there is demand, meron talagang magsusupply. No? So we believe that uh, it is now time to uh, influence uh, our uh, furniture makers no uh, in the different communities no to uh, explore the uh, potential of bamboo uh, as an alternative to all wood based products no uh, next slide in this picture you can see that uh, we were able to construct a table similar to uh, to uh, what we can do with the uh, hardwood Oh. Next slide. So this is a uh, a backyard uh, engineered bamboo manufacturing plant in Iligan City. Uh, we were able to partner with the uh, Home Beastcraft, uh, owned and managed by uh, Mr. Robert Palomares. No, uh, this will show us no that uh, there is a sustainable way no, in. Uh, in developing uh, furniture items no and even construction materials no, without without having to cut trees no so alam na natin natin ngayon naaalos na ubos na yung ating kagubatan and panahon po na po talaga para ating i-champion ang kawayan no as an alternative material no to to uh, hardwood no otherwise uh, Mauubos ho ang kagubatan and tayo rin ho ang magsasuffer pagdating ng panahon ng tag-ulan no? uh, due to landslide, flash flooding, etc. Next slide. So, uh, every day or uh, on a regular basis, we conduct uh, uh, orientation session on uh, the potential of bamboo. Uh, we conduct regular session on bamboo propagation, regular session on uh, bamboo architecture, uh, both for uh, uh, construction and uh, furniture making. Next slide, please. So this is the, uh, this is one of the 
the groups that we were able to uh, to provide an orientation on uh, uh, bamboo furniture making. No? Next slide. So we also encourage no, our uh, our friends no, and brothers and sisters in the uh, armed services no the army the uh, the police the air force no to to explore no kasi marami to sa Mindanao marami po tayong mga reservation areas no uh, na ang nagma-manage pa yung ating mga kasundaluhan so we also encourage them to plant uh, bamboo no in their respective uh, camps no whether for uh, uh, planting materials or for uh, later on no? for uh, whole production. Next item, please. Next slide, please. Okay. So my dear friends, no, this is actually my last slide. No? I really believe that uh, the financial education is essential because the well-being and strength of nations depend on every individual's financial competence. When people are well aware of the consequences of their economic decisions, their healthy financial attitudes lead to financially protected lives. The fewer people with poor financial choices, the sturdier the society will become. No? Uh, the, uh, I got this uh, particular uh, excerpt no? in one of my uh, readings. Unfortunately, I can no longer locate the, the author. No? So uh, my dear friends, I really believe that in order for all of us no, to ensure that we are able to protect the environment and encourage our, uh, our Kababayans to become uh, uh, environmental uh, stewards, and in order for all of us to encourage our friends to practice sustainability and promote the sustainable development, we really need to ensure that they are that we are also able you know, to secure their financial and economic well-being. So, my dear friends, uh, yan lang po ang aking presentation, and I am open to any questions, clarification on uh, on my presentation. Thank you very much for uh, giving me this opportunity. I'm very sorry for the technical glitch. Thank you. Thank you very much, Congressman, for that very um, um, substantial uh, and meaningful talk to everyone. We are very happy for that you were able to allow us um, accept our invitation. Well, at this moment, may I call on? The floor is now open for our forum, open forum, and may I call on our webinar chairperson, Jet L. Disukatan, MBA, for the open forum. Thank you so much, Dr. Joanna. And at this point, I believe that Congressman Alva is ready to answer your questions and i know that most of our participants have concerns or have something in mind to ask so to those who will be asking questions to congressman alba you may post your answers or you may post your questions rather at our zoom chat box or either you may raise your hands and ask it directly to congressman alba and talking about raising their hands let's have the question coming from Doki Seibel. Doki Seibel, go ahead. Hello, Congressman Alba. Good morning, po. Hi, good morning. Um, first of all, I would like to come to commend you po, for a very wonderful presentation although in the very beginning we uh, we've experienced several technical glitches and we weren't able to see the first part of your presentation po. but later on po, um, congressman i found your presentation very interesting um i really like the uh, the projects that you did especially the bamboo furnitures and the alternative use of bamboo as um, a way to promote sustainability um my, my question po, congressman is 
what is your take on Fox um, sustainability? Like other companies, they use sustainability as a front for commercial purposes, but they don't really promote uh, a real sustainability, most especially in tourism destinations. And um, they only do this to to just draw in the attention of the consumers, but in the end, no, it's just like greenwashing or or um, it's just a front, no for them. What is your take on that, Congressman? How can we prevent that kind of um, activity among corporations? Po? And how can we also detect um, Fox sustainability? Uh, for, I thank you. Thank you. You have a very nice question. No? Uh, actually, that's really a challenge. No? That's really a challenge. Uh, because uh, nowadays, no, uh, we since the in thing nowadays is about sustainability. No? So I think right now, the public is uh, very intelligent to detect no? kung sino yung mga companies or just greenwashing. No? Uh, nakikita naman natin yan ano? kung sino yung totoo na nagpupursue talaga ng uh, mga green initiatives no? sa kanilang kumpanya, sa kanilang mga negosyo, and uh, siguro number one makikita natin yan sa sa core values na pinopromote ng kumpanya sa kanilang vision and mission no and uh, yung mga kalokohan naman nakikita naman din yan pagdating sa mga regulators natin eh no although hindi minsan hindi lahat uh, nahuhuli pero later on nakikita natin na lumalabas din naman kung anong totoo no and we have seen so many companies in Europe no na we thought they are doing uh, they are practicing uh, uh, sustainable uh, uh, business practices pero later on we found out na hindi pala no yung sabi mga natin na greenwashing pero nakita din naman natin kung anong epekto most of them bumagsak ang kanilang mga stocks no dahil sa na discover ng uh, ng general public no ng mga tao na hindi pala totoo hindi pala sincere yung kanilang uh, uh, green agenda no so it's only a matter of time no para makita ng uh, sambayanan kung tayo ba ay sincero sa ating mga inisyatiba para protektahan ang ating uh, kalikasan no so right now we have actually marami na tayong batas no sa sa ating bansa no ang challenge ngayon is on implementation no uh, monitoring enforcement and regulation no but we should not lose hope we should not lose hope no uh, me no as a naive legislator i think the big uh, there's a big opportunity for me and for us no to continue influencing our friends, our colleagues, no, and the different sectors na pwede nating ma-influensyahan. No? Sa totoo lang, uh, madali makipag-away. But the higher calling of leadership is actually influencing. No? So, number one, na kailangan nating influensyahan ang ating mga kasama sa bahay. No? Kasi baka mamaya, ano nga tayo, uh, environmental advocate no talagang staunch advocate tayo ng environmental protection pero yun pala yung mga kasama natin sa bahay no nagtatapo ng mga basura ng mga plastic sa uh, ating kalye na hindi nagpa-practice ng recycling no or uh, hindi nagpa-practice ng energy conservation no and this is the challenge to all of us no we should start influencing the people around us, uh, starting from our family, and then to our neighbors, to our barangay, to our community, no, and then to our municipality, province, and of course, hopefully, no, uh, the nation at large, no. So, yun ang answer, Kumab. Thank you so much, Congressman Alba. Um,
I've really learned a lot from your session this morning and I'm really thankful that you brought this up because I think this is what is needed right now. Very timely and relevant po talaga yung talk mo. Thank you so much. Oh, if, I, if I may add, no, ma'am, if I may add, I, uh, that's why I really am championing financial education kasi nakikita ko na uh, if we limit ourselves no, to uh, championing environmental causes no, uh, and sustainability and pushing our sustainability agenda without the accompanying uh, financial education, hindi rin sustainable yung effort. No? Kasi marami tayong mga kababayan, magaling mag, uh, mag-lecture, magturo pagdating sa sa uh, environmental protection. Pero tanungin mo, kamusta na po kayo? Sir, problema po, sir. Baon ako sa utang. <laughs> no? so, so, we really need to ensure that as we work towards environmental uh, more robust environmental protection, we should also, how I wish, no, na, at the same time, we also champion uh, um, financial literacy so that uh, uh, we are able to secure the economic well-being of our people and at the same time no, push our agenda towards a sustainability and environmental protection. Thank you so much, Congressman Alba. Thank you so much, Dr. Seibel, for raising that question. Indeed, Congressman, I really agree to that. So it really takes a micro effort for a macro effect. Okay. And at this point, we have another question coming from um, Ma'am Meriche. Ma'am Meriche, go ahead. Thank you, Doc Jeff. Uh, good morning, Congressman. Good morning, uh, ma'am. You have a very interesting and relevant topic. And actually, I just heard it just now. It's uh, about environmental finance. Uh, I am Mirich Chitinaranda, working as Senior Tourism Officer of the Local Government Unit of San Miguel here in Leyte. But actually, I came from Coronadal City, sir, uh, Congressman. Uh, did you hear about open pit mining in Tampacan, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Actually, I will just uh, ask your opinion regarding this matter since Gina Lopez really against the opening of that open pit mining and now that our city is not only city but our province is currently suffering from rampant flooding maybe brought about by this i believe this open pit mining so what is your take regarding this take or opinion regarding this open pit mining in our place sir uh first of all ma'am um uh we have there are sufficient regulation in place, no? There are relevant agencies that are also looking after this uh, uh, activities, no? Especially as extractive. I think uh, our responsibility, no, whether we are in, in government service or uh, um, members of the community, I think our responsibility is to raise these issues to the relevant authorities. Uh, in, in 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 your case, I. Sir, uh, naka mute naka mute po ang phone niyo. Okay. So I think it's very important that we raise this matter to the relevant government agencies, no? Uh, whether it's the local government, the provincial government, and uh, ultimately with the national government, no? Because. Uh, kumbaga kanya-kanya tayong lugar eh no uh, mining is well there has to be a good balancing act between economic development and uh, uh, environmental protection no pero me personally no me personally i am more towards uh, environmental protection because that is uh, that is the basic uh, 
that is the foundation of all life no so ani natin yung mga mga economic development no kung uh, kung masisira naman ang kalikasan di ba so importante na protektahan natin ang kalikasan no so for specific uh, issues no sa mga different uh, activities no whether it's agricultural or extractive no uh, i think what we need to do is really raise the matter no if there are are um, serious issues no we really need to raise it to the uh, lgu concern no kasi syempre kung nagka problema diyan kung may, may problema man sa isang bayan or sa isang lugar pagdating sa mga whether it's mining activities or, or agricultural activities no ang number one din naman apektado diyan is yung local government unit di ba so uh, what i can uh, suggest ma'am is a more collaborative effort no between between the uh, the general public and the local government unit no and if it's possible no maybe we can also include in the discussion no ang uh, academe ang mga chambers of commerce no because environmental protection is a collaborative effort no hindi po pwedeng isang sector lang ang ang nagbabantay hindi lang din pwede na ang local government lang din no we all have a responsibility to work together towards uh, uh, to in order to to protect and ensure that we are able to protect no our uh, natural environment thank you congressman for such an informative answer may, may i ask one question last question uh, what sustainability challenges does your district face and how did you overcome it? Maybe we can use it in our municipality too. Okay, so that's a very good question, ma'am, no? So, uh, ito, 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 this, is a, this is a real situation, no? Uh, alam naman natin na yung ating mga kabundukan, no? Ay, uh, although meron ng total lagban, alam naman natin na dahan-dahan pa rin nauubos yung mga puno natin, yung mga kahoy. No? As I have said during my presentation, kasi alam naman natin na patuloy pa rin ang pagputol ng kahoy. No? Uh, for as long as may nakikita tayong mga gumagawa dyan ng uh, lamesa, pintuan, mga cabinets no? made of hardwood, no? made of nara, mahogany, acacia mangyum, no? For as long as may nakikita tayo diyan sa mga sa mga bayan natin sa ating mga lungsod na may mga ganitong produkto, isa lang ho ang ibig sabihin noon. Napatuloy pa rin ang pagputol ng kahoy. No? So kahit pa siguro marami tayong ano diyan, marami tayong forest rangers sa ating mga kabundukan, for as long as may uh, may demand for hardwood then supply will really find its way pababa no so so yun ang realidad niya no because it's economics eh if there is demand the supply will really come no so, so that's why we, we really embark on on introducing bamboo you know, as an alternative uh, material to all wood based products because we believe that uh, we need to change the mindset of people no so ngayon, we have an ongoing campaign in northern Mindanao to influence our uh, furniture makers no? to shift no? from hardwood to bamboo. No? So ngayon, grabe ang ating uh, uh, pangangampanya, no? pag-influensya sa ating mga komunidad na uh, lumipat sa kawayan instead of hardwood. No? Kahit na lang yung mga yung gumagawa ng uling no sa mga bukid no yung, uh, alam naman natin na yung uling ngayon yung uling naman eh kahoy ang pinanggalingan no so we are also introducing bamboo charcoal, charcoal briquette no as a substitute to wood based charcoal no kasi kung kung walang substitute eh alam naman natin na yung mga tao yung mga kababayan natin will continue cutting trees para gawing uh, uling no 
Kasi kailangan din naman nilang magnegosyo para maipakain sa kanilang pamilya. Hindi man natin pwedeng sabihin na huwag na kayong mag-uling. So para na rin natin sinabing huwag na silang kumain. So ang pwede po natin sabihin, pwede ho ba? Ihinto na ho natin ang uh, paggawa uh, ng uling na galing sa kahoy at subukan ho natin yung uling na gawa sa kawayan. No? And it is very possible. No? Marami na pong gumagawa niyan ngayon. And we are also uh, introducing the concept of uh, bamboo charcoal briquette as an alternative no, to, to wood-based charcoal. So that's a very concrete example no, that uh, pwede natin i-introduce yung concept ng sustainability no, sa ating mga komunidad. Thank you, Congressman. I will try to recommend your advocacy to our panero. And thank you for choosing to be with us today. Have a nice You're day. You're welcome. Ma thank you so much, Ma Merit. Indeed, Congressman, so we really need you know, the drive to pursue that advocacy. So we've got another question coming from Mr. Nolly Diaz. Sir Nolly? Hello. Good morning. Am I audible? Hello? Yes, you are. Okay. Good morning again, especially to our guest speaker, uh, Congressman. Sir, here is my question. What is the most important aspect of financial literacy and how does literacy connect to sustainability? Okay. So, can we still uh, screen share the presentation? Is Pao still around? Pao, are you still around? Okay. So, okay. Okay. Uh, that slide, the one with, with uh, a red color. Next slide, please. Next slide. This one, this one. Okay. If you look at the, the model, no? I said that uh, we need to introduce and consistently campaign for three things. Number one is environmental protection. Number two is sustainable livelihood. Plus, plus financial education. No? Dapat po kasi para masiguro natin na merong na yakapin ng taong bayan ang konsepto ng sustainability. Napakahalaga po na masiguro din natin ang financial at ekonomiyang uh, uh, economic well-being. No? Kasi kanina yung sinabi ko po kanina, yung isang nag- uh, yung isang tao na ang kanyang negosyo ay magbenta ng uling, no? ito po ay kumikita on a daily basis. No? Alam naman po natin na yung uling, yung uuling ng kahoy, ay nakakasira ng kalikasan. Pero kung sasabihin natin sa kanya na stop ka namang uling, ano naman ang kapapakain niya sa pamilya niya? No? So what we are saying is, Manong, pwede ho ba instead na ang gamitin mo ay kahoy sa pag uh, sa paggawa uh, mo ng uling, pwede ho ba na gamitin natin ang uh, kawayan, no? Kasi ang kawayan po ay uh, hindi nakakasira sa kalikasan. Ito po ay uh, uh, di katulad ng madali siyang i-grow, no? No? That's number one. And number two, kung meron ho yang uh, kaakibat na training kung paano niya i-manage ang kanyang ang kanyang uh, ang kanyang salapi no ang kanyang pera no ang kanyang financial resources no no matutulungan po natin ang ating mga kababayan na umahon sa kahirapan no so importante po talaga ang konsepto ng financial education no nandiyan po yung savings nandiyan po yung uh, 
pagplano pagdating sa ating retirement, investment, nandiyan din po yung mga pamamaraan kung paano natin i-manage ang ating mga utang, no? So ito po yung mga bagay na na kinakailangan matutunan natin na maging uh, as I have said a while ago, these are the things that should uh, should be uh, considered core competence of every Filipino, of every Filipino. Kasi the only way we can uh, ensure our economic future is if we are able to uh, responsibly manage and handle our financial resources. No? Kung ang mayaman nga ho ay eh, nababankrap sa kanilang mga negosyo no? dahil sa pagkakamali sa paghandle ng pera, how much more po yung ating mga kapatid na medyo baon sa kahirapan and kung wala pa hong uh, uh, sufficienting uh, kaalaman or uh, training pagdating sa kung paano gamitin ang pera, paano i-manage ang pera, mas mahihirapan po nating i-push ang ating sustainability agenda, mas mahirapan po nating i-push ang environmental stewardship because alam naman po natin na ang ating kapatid ay baon sa kahirapan. Bakit? Sa maraming dahilan. And of course, one of which is the lack of financial literacy. Okay. Thank you so much, Sir Nolly, for raising that question. So there's for everything in this world, Kaya is interconnected. Talaga. Okay, moving along. I can still see people raising their hand, but before anything else, allow me to read some comments coming from our Zoom chat box. First is from Angelo Noel of NTC. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. It will be helpful to my personal growth, to your first guest speaker, and for the webinar today. So welcome, Angelo. Another is coming from Pamhurlina Ongun. Thank you for a realistic and insightful talk. Kudos for championing financial literacy. And she, re she really believes that Filipinos indeed need that. So keep up. Thank you, Ma'am Horlina Ongon. Okay, moving along. We've got a question coming from Mr. Anthony Espanola. Go ahead, sir. Good morning, everyone. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Congressman. Good morning, sir. I, I'm very happy and excited for today's webinar, actually, because I am always uh, conscious about uh, using uh, plastic bags, mga plastic cups because uh, I myself is already practicing for two years since pandemic started that I, when I purchase items, I'm bringing my own bags. And Congratulations. Thank you. And somehow I am uh, doing some online selling. I am selling native products made out of pandan, uh, rattans, and some abacas. So, mga native baskets, native bags, and mga native uh, placemats, and some uh, rattan furnitures. So this year, I'm I'm actually targeting to introduce and discover uh, new products made out of bamboos, because in our place, medyo walang matumal or hindi ganun karinig yung, yung bamboo industry. So my question is, uh, how can we, how the BEEP team uh, in Bukidnon can reach out no people who are interested in, in bamboos? No? How can we reach you out, po, Congressman? Actually, uh, uh, Sister Marley has my number and you can always uh, text me or uh, send me an email and we are more than willing to to help no in whatever way we can no maybe we can give an orientation about uh, bamboo 
and including financial and including financial literacy. But your team po is also planning to uh, visit different kinds of places. Now to... we're actually based in uh, Bukidnon, but uh, if uh, our schedule uh, permits, no, we can always uh, extend our our time, our assistance uh, to your group. All right. Last question po. How was the turnout of bamboo products po natin in Bukidnon? Right now, we have a, an association no? of furniture makers. No? Uh, San Miguel Bamboo Industry Association. So, actually, medyo maganda ang performance ng kanilang uh, uh, organization kasi yung uh, mga products nila, especially itong mga cottages, nakakaabot ng, uh, I think, butuan, even Tommy City, no? So, right now, we are currently experimenting on small items, no? Kasi ang expertise nila is on uh, bamboo hat making, no? So, dalaan nyo lang si Diana na ipapukuhan nyo. Lele, lang gid. No, so, right now, we are introducing mga small items, no? Like, uh, uh, what we call this? Chopsticks, no? Cutleries, no? So, it's an ongoing uh, project. Thank you very much, Congressman. And I'm really grateful to, to hear, no? To, to, you have given me enlightenment about oh, the uh, bamboo you. industry. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Anthony Y. Espanola. Indeed, sir, this is your time to get in touch with Congressman Alba. I know that you, you've been practicing and you've been promoting native products already. I'm actually one of your customer. You should get, get in touch with Congressman so you can also maximize or you can extend more of your products. Probably you can feature bamboo products soon. Okay, moving along. We do have a question coming from Sister Marley. Sister Marley? Hi, good morning. I used to call you Joman, but now, medyo nahiyan akong tumawag ng Joman. So, Congressman Joman. Uh, Joman lang, okay lang. <laughs> thank you very much for really accepting our invitation despite of your hectic schedule. I know today is your family day. So, wala ka sa pamilya mo. Ari ka di sa amo, no? Okay. So, um, you really live up to your name, man, no? You're really a man for others, no? Uh, I love your advocacy, you know, your freedom and your beef. Actually, personally, I love uh, bamboo furniture. You know? I love native products. And mayroon lang akong kaunting katanungan. Okay? Uh, how do we um, spread this, your advocacy? How do you, how do you plan to, to raise that to uh, the Congress as a bill or something? Para naman, hindi lang sa bukid no, no? Para naman sa buong Pilipinas ang mak mak ma maka makinabang ng iyong magandang proyekto, no? Thank you. So, thank you, sister. Again, thank you for inviting me. Uh, well, there are actually several bills in Congress uh, in connection with the uh, bamboo industry. And we are supporting these bills. No? Uh, that's number one. Number two, uh, there are also several, I think there are around two or three bills also, similar bills on financial education. No? And I am also supporting these bills. No? Uh, well, my primary role is as a legislator is to make laws. But uh, on the side, no, of course, because this is my advocacy. No, um, I also make myself available. No, kung may mga invitation, no, uh, to talk about bamboo or to talk about financial education. No, uh, for as long as uh, my schedule uh, will allow it. No, ako naman po ay uh, umiikot, uh, nagbibigay ng panahon. Thank you. Did you introduce this in Brooks Point? 
<laughs> soon, soon. Soon. Because I saw uh, Tita Marie is uh, having a resort with bamboo. Mga, ano to, mga, basta maganda, no? Sana. I hope I could be back there and see. Siguro, uh, what, I, what I can uh, recommend, no? especially for our, for those attending this webinar, if you are interested in bamboo, maybe the first thing that you can do is to look around. Ano ba yung mga kawayan na meron dyan sa lugar ninyo? No? And maybe we can start there. No? Kasi alam naman po natin, yung kawayan, ma, ano yan eh, kumbaga pahiyang-hiyang yan eh. Hiyang ba dito sa lugar na to, yung ganitong klase ng kawayan? No? So, uh, but maraming uses ang kawayan. No? Alam naman po natin yung dabong. No? Uh, it's also a, a, a very good, uh, oh. yes, uh, source of uh, uh, of uh, revenue no marami yung nag-invest sa uh, bottling or canning ng dabong no so marami pong ano maraming there are so many opportunities in bamboo uh, congressman uh, you know bamboo sometimes na dali siya mabukbok so what do you do parang matreat ma prevent yung bukbok sa bamboo kasi in the long run Ano siya? Actually, uh, the reason why my book book sa bamboo is because ang bamboo po kasi mataas ang kanyang starch content. No? Um, uh, mataas ang starch content niya. So, kinakailangan na mawala yung starch. Actually, halos lahat naman ng kahoy may starch. So, there is a process uh, that we do in order to uh, ensure na madrain yung bamboo ng starch. Kasi kung wala ng starch, wala na rin kakainin yung bukbok. No? So, there's a process no, that uh, we can also share. And this is not a very uh, technical process. No? Anybody can do it. Uh, hindi mo kailangan ng malaking capital. No? This is not uh, intensive in terms of capital and financial resources. Any farmer any uh, small time furniture maker can do it thank you thank you so much thank you once again thank you sister marley and as well thank you for introducing congressman alba to us so okay moving along so i think we uh, i have seen a hand raising from our guests, participants, and that will be Ma'am Horlina Ongon. Do you have a question? Ma'am Horlina, are you still there? Okay, so baka babalik lang siya mamaya. Okay, so we have another question coming from Miss Joanna Villana. Miss Joanna, go ahead. Hi, Congressman. Good morning once again. My question po is, since you are already at the post of being a congressman, um, based on your observation, um, why do people keep on ignoring issues about sustainability? Hey, that's a very good question, you know? Well, uh, siguro, no. again, magandang tanong yan, no? Babalik din ako dyan doon sa term na sinamention ko kanina. Freedom. No? Freedom. No? And because we have freedom, we have the capability to choose. No? Ang problema, meron tayong mga kaibigan, may mga kapatid tayo, may mga kilala tayo, at sometimes, alam mo na, uh, sumisipa yung greed. No? <laughs> no? Yung iba, gustong kumita ng malaki, kaya inaabuso yung kalikasan. Yung iba naman medyo ayaw gawin kasi medyo may katamaran. No? Ay, ang hirap naman yan. Iipunin ko pa lahat ng isosort ko pa yung nabubulok sa hindi nabubulok. Yung plastic sa papel. No? And uh, I think it's also high time no, sa, for us especially, no? mga educators, maybe it's high time na for us to stop sharing yung stories ni Juan Tamad. No? Kasi 
ang nare-reinforce niya na value eh katamaran. <laughs> Although tayong lahat ay uh, natutuwa, nakakaliw sa mga kwento ni Juan Tomad, but I think uh, yung nare-reinforce niya na personal value is not really uh, positive. Maybe we can make stories about Juan Masipag. No? Instead of promoting Juan Tamad, maybe we can we can, uh, we can promote Juan Masipag. So that's that's another point, no? Number one, yung mga iba umaabuso, yung iba naman medyo may katamaran. And number three, which is a, a very common, no? Marami tayong mga kapatid na walang panahon or hindi nila hindi nila napagbibigyan ng pansin ang konsepto ng sustainability kasi posibleng mas busy sila sa kanilang uh, mga survival needs. No? Katulad nung sabi ko kanina, yung isang tao na ang kanyang negosyo ay ang pagbibenta ng uling, eh, kadalasan ito yung mga medyo, ito yung mga kapatid natin na medyo baon sa kahirapan. No? So syempre kung uh, uh, dahil dahil baon sa kahirapan no? and uh, everyday kailangan kumita nila kasi kumita sila kasi kung hindi sila kikita sa pagbebenta ng uling, posibleng walang kaining pananghalian or hapunan ang kanilang pamilya, ang kanilang mga anak. No, when when you are actually in that level or in that situation or in that survival mode, napakahirap po kasi i-influence sila, no? Kasi kung sa kung pag-uusapan natin ang hierarchy of needs, nandun siya sa sobrang basic na kailangan pa niyang mamit na nagsa-struggle pa siya para mamit no so these are the things that uh, we need to understand no bakit meron tayong mga kababayan na nahihirapan sumunod no or nahihirapan na uh, i-champion ang konsepto ng uh, uh, sustainable development no but we should not give up no we should not give up tayo na nabigyan ng pagkakataon at panahon na makapag-aral mabigyan ng magandang edukasyon, it is our moral obligation to spread no, uh, the good news, no, to spread the, the information to our brothers and sisters, especially in the rural areas. No? We have that moral obligation to educate, no, to help our kababayans na ma-enlighten sila no, sa, sa mga consequence no, ng uh, hindi magandang uh, uh, pag-manage or hindi magandang pagtrato no sa ating kalikasan no? so it's actually a challenge no? thank you very much congressman can i have a follow up question congressman one last sure. question um in your area or in your place which is the bukidnon how can issues of sustainability be brought on local level paano po okay that's another that's a very good question also no alam mo ma'am uh, i think ang challenge is in influencing no influencing no and as leaders i think that's the greatest uh, calling the higher calling of leadership is about influencing no madali katulad ng sinabi ko kanina madali manita No? Hoy kayo, bakit ganito kayo? Ba't ganyan kayo? Ba't hindi kayo gumagawa ng ganito? Ganyan. Pero I really believe na as leaders, our higher calling is influencing. We can actually influence not only our friends, even our detractors, even our enemies. No? Given the time no? and the opportunity, I think we have the capability of influencing everybody. No? So nandun yung challenge, no? Kasi we want we are championing sustainability, right? So ito kinakailangan open yung mga kausap mo sa idea. Ngayon kung feeling nila ay eh, antagonistic ka na, hindi na sila open sa yo. So mas mahihirapan kang kumbinsihin, no? So in in Bukid noon, what I do is I continue doing this, no? Yung influencing in so uh, in so many levels no? and it doesn't happen on a single day it it should happen every day no 
every time there is an opportunity, every time there is a, uh, as I have said, an opportunity to discuss uh, sustainable livelihood, I always grab the opportunity. Thank you very much, Congressman. I was really surprised with your answer. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Joanna, for raising those interesting questions. We've got another question. Again, Ma'am Orlina Ungun, are you there? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Morning, ma'am. Congressman, thank you for a very enriching talk. And I am most impressed with your financial education campaign as part of uh, environmental development. I gather, Congressman, that you will pass or you have passed a bill to include this in the DepEd curriculum. Yes, ma'am. Uh, related to that, uh, Congressman, do you have any plan to further that bill and include that financial literacy curriculum in the higher education? Uh, yes, ma'am. That's the direction. Okay. That's the direction right now. Not only, not only secondary, sec uh, primary, secondary, tertiary, technical education. We are also, uh, in the coming days, I'm also going to file another bill to require uh, businesses not to provide continuing financial education to their employees. Yes, good to that. Thank you. Because uh, I part of my question is uh, also uh, conducting uh, financial literacy to the workforce, both public because they are the ones earning and you sh and they should have financial management yes ma'am yes okay. it is re it's really very important especially in our workforce no yes, i've been yes. with, i've been with the private sector for more more or less around two decades no and my greatest realization is this no amount of salary increase will solve your financial problems if yes. you do not know how to manage your finances. Yes, yes. So uh, I, I, I really hope that, uh, um, no, that uh, this particular bill will, be, will pass into law because we really need to ensure that the next generation of Filipinos uh, will uh, have the, uh, uh, the competence no, in... Uh, uh, in managing their financial resources that's the only way we can we can uh, guarantee or ensure that uh, we will be able to little by little reduce poverty in our country yes i, I really agree to that thank you congressman you're welcome ma'am thank you ma'am Herlina. I, th uh, I think this will be our last question. Um, from SRA MCD, sorry, I can just see your initials. M SRA MCD, are you there? Oh, it's also your sister. Sister, go ahead. Mr. Maris, naka mute ka. Paki unmute. Okay, Yana. Okay. So good morning, everyone. Hello, good morning. Hi, good morning. So we're together here with uh, uh, Sir Marley in St. Raphael's Academy. So thank you for the sharing. She shared to me the, the link. That's the reason why I was able to attend. So Joman, thank you so much. And I'm so happy that you are now connected to the, the to the government. So I can say that there is really hope. No, there is really hope, like the bamboo. So I could say, um, I really appreciate your sharing about the bamboo. 
as I've said that uh, that's one also of my favorite. Um, you know, when in fact the the bamboo, uh, my brother, you know, uh, when he ano yan, lumpia, he used the bamboo for cooking with the firewood. Yeah. So the bamboo, it said that it is one of the most impressive things is the how it sways with the breeze. So it is a symbol, sabi nga, well, uh, I'm sure that you know this uh, very well, uh, no, Joman. Now, this gentle swaying movement, it is a symbol of humility. So it's very Augustine, yeah. No? So, so thank you so much and God bless your yan yung ano mo yung mipiin na mapabuti ang ating mga kababayan no so we pray for that and we really uh, hope we're really hopeful that it will really happen so god bless you for that thank you so much thank you sister maris please include me in your prayers yeah Okay, thank you so much, sister. One of the colleagues of Sister Morley. Thank you and nice to see you po. We have a question, sir. Hope you're you're good enough to answer this question. This question is coming from Miss Mainen. Miss Mainen Lubugin. Yes, sir, Jeff. Good morning, Congressman. Good morning. Yes, uh, good morning. Okay, so my question, Congressman, is how does the LGU in your district implement environmental sustainable development practices? Oh, that's a very nice question. No, So our just like any other LGU, our LGUs are also in the process, no? In the process of integrating sustainable practices, no? in their uh, uh, programs and projects. No? And one of the projects or programs that are uh, adopted no, by, uh, by our LGUs is also, is also this one, bamboo, no? uh, as one of the livelihood activities or livelihood programs. No? Uh, there are still so many uh, programs, no? sustainable practices, but I think we need to uh, champion further, no? Kasi alam mo na, alam po natin eh, ang, ang LGU will do everything, no? To, to champion uh, initiatives like this, no? Pero pag hindi cooperative ang mga tao, pag hindi nila naiintindihan, hindi sumusunod, di ba? So babalik tayo ulit doon sa tinatawag, sinabi ko kanina na influencing, no? Influencing. It's a non-stop activity. It's a non-stop activity. And we can only do that no? if, if we are able no? to really influence our leaders, especially on the ground. The kapitans, the barangay kagawads, the mayors, the councillors. No? Kinakailangan talaga hindi lang basta naka-attend sila ng seminar. Kinakailangan naiintindihan nila, naisa sa buhay nila, Pero sa totoo lang yan ay uh, mangyayari lamang no if there is consistent no influencing if there is consistent exposure if there is consistent education no mentoring coaching sa ating mga leaders no? so it's a non-stop that's why I launched the pro the program freedom no it's financial resilience through education education is basic but you cannot stop there. No? You need to provide enterprise. That's why we are introducing sustainable livelihood. But you cannot also stop there. You need to organize no? so that the people you are talking to no, are constantly reminded no, of the things that we are championing. No? But you cannot stop in organizing. You cannot stop at organizing. You have to continue mentoring no because there are so many things that we learn every day no ako marami pa rin marami rin ako natututunan every day no? marami din tayong mga iniidolo hindi lamang sa Pilipinas kung hindi rin sa ibang panig ng mundo like Al Gore no our environmental champions no so, and we we learn so much every day and we need to share this to 
to our leaders in the different local government units. No, is to share this to their uh, constituents, no, to the board official. So freedom, financial resilience through education, development, organizing, and non-stop mentoring. Thank you so much, Congressman Alba, for that. Question, yes, yes, that's a very good answer. Thank you so much for your insightful answer to my question. You're welcome. Thank you, Maminen. And thank you once again, Congressman Alba, for enthusiastically answering the question coming from our enthusiastic participants. So kindly give a virtual round of applause to Congressman Alba. And at this point, back to you, Ms. Joanna Villana. Thank you very much, Sir Zet. Thank you, Congressman, for gracing us and for answering a lot of questions coming from our participants. We are very delighted um, your, uh, from your answers. Um, I am, we are very humbled that despite of your busy schedule, you were able to insert us on your <laughs> schedule. Salamat po. Maraming maraming salamat. Well, at this moment... Always welcome. The honor is mine. Thank you po, Congressman. Well, at this moment, our e-registration chairperson, Ma'am Meritxe S. Peñaranda MM, will going to award the e-certificate of appreciation. Republic of the Philippines State University Southern Colleges, Gemara State University Graduate School Program, McLean Buenavista, Gemaras. Appreciation certificate is hereby given to Honorable Lucy Manuel Alba for the gift of time and expertise as a resource speaker during the MBA for Auto Webinar and Environmental Management with a the theme Effective Financial Literacy or Education for Environmental Stewardship and Sustainability, held on August 21, 2022, via Zoom, and August 2022, signed by the following signatories. Webinar Chairperson, Chet L. Disicotan. Webinar Co-Chairperson, Gabby B. Palacios. The MBA for Auto Professor, Gina B. Montes. The MBA Program Head, uh, Annalyn A. Hanaban, and Dean of Graduate School, Dr. Early A. Martyr. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome po, sir. Salamat po. Thank you. Um, Thank you. At this Thank moment you. of time, may I call on our technical arrangement chairperson, Anthony Y. Española, MSHM, for the group photo opportunity and e evaluation. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. I hope that everyone is still fine up to this time. So your e-evaluation form has been posted on our chat box. We are asking help from students to please answer our e-evaluation form and you will be receiving your first set of certificate. Moving forward, may I request all the students, organizers, speaker and advisors to please turn on their cameras as we will be having our photo opportunity. All right. Dr. Nolly, pwede ma, ma stop share po for a while so that we can see everyone po. Thank you. Uh, 
All right. We can see that everyone is exerting effort to on their cameras. All right. There are still some students who are not turning on their cameras. Okay, perfect. Everyone, please smile. One, two, three. Smile. Okay. Next panel, please. All right. One, two, three. Smile. Continue to on your cameras, please. Okay. One, two, three. Smile. Okay. Next panel, please. Okay. Continue to on your cameras, everyone. One, two, three. Smile. All right. Last panel. Okay. One, two, three. Smile. Okay. Perfect. Seeing those wonderful smiles makes the organizers melt their hearts because of your active participation. All right. Okay, may I request the students to please turn off their cameras. And to the organizers, speakers, and advisors, please remain on your cameras as we will be having our own photo opportunities. All right. Perfect. Okay. Organizer, smile. Okay. One, two, three, smile. Okay, next panel, please. One, two, three, smile. Okay, perfect. Thank you everyone for actively participation, for your active participation in our morning session. Miss Joanna. Thank you, Sir Anthony. Thank you, everyone. Congressman, thank you very much for sparing your time with us. We are very happy and we um, wish the best in the booking board. Salamat, maraming, maraming salamat po. Well, thank you. I... Thank you so much, Congressman. Thank hmm. you, may God bless You're welcome. You. You're all welcome. Congratulations for your... See you all. See you all in Bukidnon. Yes, Congressman. Hopefully, yes, Congressman. Thank you, thank you, and God bless. Yes. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you so much. And so it's a wrap for the wrap for this morning.